know, some of this stuff ain't normal that you're going through. You know, like, and if it hurts you, speak about it. Talk to somebody about it. And that's why, you know, I think that's why what caused my breakdown a few months ago is because I just kept going on, you know, like, not talking about it, not being vulnerable, you know, and just until finally one day you just break down. Welcome, everybody, to the Rally Cry Podcast. My name is Angel. And my name is Tyler. And you guys are here because you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to move from the past and live in this moment. And in this moment, we got a guest. Yes, I said it. We got a guest. But before I introduce you, I want to make sure that you guys follow us on Instagram at The Rally Cries. Make sure that you follow us on your favorite podcast platform. And also comment down below. Is there something that we haven't talked about or is there something we haven't talked about enough and Mm. today our guest is someone that uh, i um came across and we had countless conversations about mental health especially men's mental health and uh, he's definitely been trying to be an advocate to set up a community and a space for men especially but also women so that we could talk about mental health a lot more and make it more of a thing that it's where it's we don't get scared right because a lot of times we think oh mental health there's nothing wrong with me so everybody welcome jesse williams how are you doing today yes yes all right, all right. I'm, I'm i'm excited that you're here and uh i, I really want to go off of how we were having our conversations because we we're talking about vulnerability that's the biggest thing especially with all the adversities that we go through um we don't know where to turn especially as men we kind of get in our ego We get in our pride and we kind of just think that we should just sit to ourselves and just figure out alone. So when it comes to vulnerability, when you hear that word, what does it mean to you? You know, if if you're not as a man, if you're not vulnerable with yourself, I don't think you could grow or you can never get help, the correct help that you need. You know, you know, me growing up, I always thought I was like a Superman type of guy, like crying was like a no-no to me, Mm. you know, uh, you know, speaking about what you was going on in your life was like a no-no as well. But once I noticed I needed help, you know, I, I went and told somebody like, Hey man, I'm going through something, you know, I need some help. Like I I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not strong anymore. I'm weak right now, Mm. you know? And if I would have never did that, who knows where I would have ended up or, you know, what I would have did, you know, like, so it means a lot, you know, and I think just more men just, you know, put your guard down and, and, and learn how to be vulnerable, man. Get that help you need, you know, speak, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think what happens is that we we think that society has probably conditioned us to make us that way, right? No, it, it, it definitely has, you know. A lot of men got families and stuff like that, you know, they're dealing with, women some women are tougher than others you know they ex- some women's expectations is bigger than others so they start to think like man i can't i can't i can't show this in front of her i can't show this in front of my kids like i got a family to feed i got you know so they start they start to feel like they don't have a safe space you know so yeah society has yep. definitely done that and then you <clears throat> in this day and age you add in social media what people are saying on social media and stuff like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, a man going to be like, oh, nah, I can't, you know, so society definitely has for years, for years, you know, like, like I said, you still got older men that's in their 50s, 60s that been going through stuff since teenage years that they didn't heal from that, you know, so yeah, yeah, society definitely has a big, 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 big impact on, you know, right. Was you going to say something, Tyler? Yeah, I was going to say like, and, and Jesse covered it like already, like just bringing it up. It was, um that social media already like takes the cake with expectations so now that everything is inflated it it make it gives us a hard time especially like we don't want to seem like we're whining because then like even hearing the words uh as a man we could be prideful because like that's not the case um why is it that if i speak up it's a problem or i'm complaining and i have no reason to be doing this when i'm just voicing an opinion and why not have a conversation about it especially if like you know if i feel uncomfortable um you know and not even just with social media social media just inflates our our minds with the idea like we shouldn't 
because we're supposed to be like Superman, as Jesse mentioned, and how a lot of times, even in shows or movies, we don't really get to see a guy break down. We see him be at his lowest, and then he just comes back up. We don't see that process where he act, he's actually vulnerable with himself that allows you to see what is under that armor and what is he protecting, because we all got to protect ourselves at the end of the day. Yeah, I think what happens is just like what Tyler said. We, they don't ever see that process, and they kind of just want everything to be black and white, and society has been black and white, where as a man, you know, something happens to you, and we don't care what happens in that process. We just want to see you come back from up from it, and if you don't, then it's like, okay, we don't care, right. you know, and it's just like, why, why do we live in a society like that when, if anything, we as men are the ones that are supposed to be leaders, protectors, providers, for our society, for the people that we care about, the ones that we love. But if we can't know how to nurture them, right, us men, mm -hmm. how are we going to be able to be empowering a society to keep us up top, right? And I've said this before, but it's where I've heard plenty of times where they say, oh, well, I wouldn't really want a man to be too vulnerable. With me. Well, what is too vulnerable, you know? Like, if I'm having a bad day or if I'm just trying to express myself to something that I don't appreciate, I should be able to come to you in uh, in a way that is not whining, of course, because if I'm constantly complaining, that could get annoying. But if I'm just here just telling you, like, vulnerably how this makes me feel, like, hey, this is this is getting me upset because from what you did before is making me hard to trust you. And what happens with that, it gets thrown back in their face. Oh, so you, you don't trust me or all these things. And it's like, well, you shouldn't have to throw that in my face. Because the, the problem isn't that I don't trust you. The problem is that you did something that makes me feel like I don't trust you. Like, us men got feelings, too. We need to know how to express it. And if we can't express it to someone that we care about, we love about, or just another man, then who can we uh, express ourselves to? You know? mm. I mean, this is a whole other conversation, but this is why men seek, you know, this is why men knock out on marriages and relationships and broken homes and stuff like that, all because stuff like that like a woman doesn't care about what you're going through or, and, I, and you know i i'm I'm one of them guys where i hate the, the whole men versus women thing right you know like i i hate it but mm -hmm. it's just the truth like you know i said that's how that's how broken homes are started because a man feels like he can't talk to his wife because she's not gonna understand her maybe she's gonna be like man like get over it like you know like so yeah, no, it's true. And then when is the tables are turned is where I have to, as a man, nurture you. You know what I mean? In a way of, but of protecting you. And it's like, well, I need that too. You know what I mean? I'm 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 a human being. I got feelings too. It's not to say that um when time is difficult, I'm gonna break down because that's when I need to put my foot up. Um, but it's just where I can't be strong as a man if I can't be open with you. You know, and I think that a lot of us men are a lot more transparent than being vulnerable. And the difference between that is that when I'm transparent, I'm just letting you know I'm mad, but I'm not telling you why I'm mad. If I'm vulnerable, I'm telling you that, hey, I'm mad, and this is the reason why I'm mad. And if we're able to be a lot more vulnerable, what does that mean? That means we're able to be more um, effective with our communication with another man, another significant other family and the world would just be a lot easier you know but we've been so conditioned with all these people having these stigmas about men's mental health about that they don't need it basically and that is why like you mentioned jesse they go to doing certain things like just one night stands with girls and all these other things and then most people wonder why so much men do that. And it's because it's not only the instant gratification they get out of it, but it's also the fact that they don't know where else to go. They're lost. It's that you know? sense of relief that someone gets um, and not even caring about whether or not it's the right thing to do. And obviously, like having one that stands out of your relationship is the last thing you want to do. And I think it, there's been um, different multiple or different sets of boiling points throughout the decades because it's not just now that, you know, broken homes are being made. Like, we're talking about even generations before us in our parents' time and their parents' time. And now I can say, like, this is uh, this has reached a new boiling point where now we're in a society where, with social media, we're tearing down relationships, we're tearing down homes. There are people intentionally getting um, divorces because of what they see on social media and taking advice from 
probably the people that you shouldn't be taking advice from because now anybody can just put a mic to their to their mouth and say what they say and p- there's people that listen to that and they don't take into consideration of what kind of advice they're giving and how that it's almost it's a uh, not almost but it's just uh detrimental to themselves and the relationship that did that they're in and i even think that um with how parenting styles have been throughout the years uh i could say it's always it's always really been the father that takes a lot of the slack and more like okay uh just listen to your mother type of thing and now um we can't even have a conversation so like jesse like what would you say like how was uh, vulnerability modeled growing up up until now has, has has that changed drastically or has that always been something that has been off it's always been something off it like in my household because like i said like growing up I always wanted to model my pop so like i ain't never seen my dad cry mm. ever my dad was mm. in man mode 24 7 you know um i could always come to my pops my parents period about things you know but it it just was me. Like, I just always wanted to model my pops. Like, nah, you know, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to talk about nothing. I can handle it. And for, and like, literally my whole life, my teenage years up until, like, maybe about a year ago, like, that's how I designed my life. Like, life goes on. Like, if something happens to me, I'll go on with no closure. I don't even talk about it. Don't heal from it. Just, hey, that's how life is. Nobody said this was going to be perfect. But in reality, nah, bro, some of this stuff ain't normal that you're going through. You know, like, and if it hurts you, speak about it. Talk to somebody about it. And that's why, you know, I think that's why what caused my breakdown a few months ago is because I just kept going on, you know, like, not talking about it, not being vulnerable, you know, and just until finally one day you just break down, you know? Mm. So, yeah. And then you just tell yourself, I I, I had enough. I had I, enough, I, yeah. I'm done. Like, yeah. I don't want to keep hurting anymore. Yep. I want to feel healed. Yep. I want to be around people that make me know scene that's what it is you know like when we're trying to express ourselves it's not that we have to cry 24 7 it's just i I just need someone to talk to i just need someone to be there to articulate my thoughts and if if i am i wrong to feel this right like i don't i don't know i just need someone to be right there be like now you you good man and nine times out of ten i swear that's all we need somebody just listen yeah Mm -hmm. i know i'm not gonna get the answers i want right away the, the results i want right away but you just sitting there really listening to me, not on your phone, mm-hmm. just listening. Yes. It makes you feel better. For me personally, you know, like, it made me feel better just somebody just sitting there listening to me. Mm. Give me a little advice here and there. Like I said, I know I'm not going to get the answers and the results I need right away, but just listen. Just listen. That's what. That's what. That's it. It's quality you know, time. Something as simple as that. Just listen. Yeah. It's, it's quality time, it sounds like. You know, mm-hmm. when you're with someone... Um, that you love and care about, you want to have their undivided attention, especially when you're obviously talking about something that bothers you. you no, know, I, I don't want you on your phone. Like, are you listening if you're on your phone? So, you know, when it comes to certain adversities and we're going through it, it's kind of like, when, when do we ask for help for men? Like, when would it be the last straw? Like, a lot of times I see that people only ask for help when it's where they're really damaged, but there's nothing wrong with that. But what would you say that could be a thing, at least from your experience, that striked you out to be like, you know what, I need to just ask for help? I, you know, I, I suggest just men, just don't wait to the last minute, because like you said, like, I, I I pretty much waited. Not the last minute, you know, like, I, you know, it wasn't the last minute with me, but I waited to, like, it was, like, a pile of things on my back to say something versus, like, just two or three things that's bothering me right now, you know. Um, you know, I didn't go talk to somebody or tell them, like, hey, this is how I feel. How can we fix it? You know, versus letting those two or three situations pile up and then those two or three situations turn into 100. And now it's like you're really like, oh, man, like, drained out to the point where, you know, not me personally, but some men feel like they got to self-harm, mm. you know, like. Right. So, men, like, just. Don't, don't look at it as being just men. You just can't look at it as being like soft or you know something like that. Just look at it as just like man, hey, I'm tired. I just need somebody to talk to real quick. You want you know, ask ask your homeboy like, hey, you want to go bowling? Let's go for a drink or something like that. You know, just don't wait to the last minute because that's that's when it, you know, you're just gonna let things pile up and pile up and pile up to the point you just forget about it. And next thing you know, like I said, you're gonna wait to the last minute when it's too late. 
And right. I just, I just, I just, that's the thing I try to preach the most is, hey, man, just find a safe spot, a friend, a parent, go to therapy, seek therapy, and just let it out, you know? Yeah. But don't wait to the last minute, you know, because everybody's not built the same, you know? Yep. So. No, I agree. Um, sometimes for myself, you know, if it's not anyone in that moment that I can talk to, uh, one thing I've done, I'll look in the mirror and I'll just be like talking to myself. Like, this is how I feel. And I'm just expressing myself to whatever it is, whatever I'm feeling. And I'll just keep looking myself in the eye in the mirror because at the end of the day, people are not going to understand you as much as you understand yourself. And you'll be fortunate that someone is actually hearing you out and making you feel seen. Uh, but it's still good to have that relationship with yourself. You know what I mean? You can always build a relationship with other people and have those people that listen to you. That's the best thing you can ever have. But being able to help have that relationship with yourself is also important because yeah. I think that if you can't build that with yourself, then how are you going to know how to build with someone else and it's a different foundation? You don't even know where to start because you don't know what they've been through. Their childhood traumas, like you was talking about how that is a part of the reason why us men are conditioned to respond a certain way or if anything, not respond. So I think that when it comes to trying to ask for help and, you know, it's therapy and all those things. Also, solitude can be a big part of that. Have you been in solitude? Do you think that's something that worked out for you? Like, what's the, like, definition for, like, solitude? Yeah. Uh, I'll say solitude is when you are in content with being by yourself and you're able to, like, be okay with your thoughts alone. The definition for solitude is the state or situation of being alone in an uninhabited place. I'm gonna be honest. I, when I, I when I left and went to like that facility for those for those uh, few weeks, mm -hmm. I noticed something about myself. My therapist said, um, a word called um, what's the word um, what's that word um, what does it mean like co co codependency? Okay, yep, codependency. Yep. You know, I got big codependency problem. Mm. You know, like. I, I could be, I can get dressed for an event, look at myself in the mirror, be like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm a good looking guy, I'm a fly guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, but I wasn't happy. I like, uh, you know, I'm not one of them, you know, codependency, like, uh, you know, I wasn't happy unless I was making somebody else happy, mm. you know? So, right. like, for, for example, like the event I had yesterday, when everybody, when it's over, everybody's coming to me saying, hey, you, you know, Good guy, man. Keep doing, you know, like that makes me happy, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, I gotta be with a female that's always telling me like, oh, you, I love you, I, you know, you make me so happy. Mm. If not, being by myself, I'm not gonna. Lie, I hate it. Mm. I don't like it. Right. I'm comfortable with it because it's 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 been going on for so long, and I'm comfortable with my thoughts. But at the same time, I don't like it though. Right. You know, and I don't know why I feel like this, but it's just. A that's just that's just what it is, you know, and that's something I got to get past, you know. It's not anything bad, you know. My therapist said everybody in, in, in living on this earth has codependency issues, which I do believe. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Right. And I appreciate you for even, you know, telling us that story because even for myself, you know, I like being by myself. But then there is some times where I do feel really great when someone tells me that I'm doing something good or that they appreciate me, like words of affirmation. I'm kind of, I'm that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. And it's, as men, we need that, you know what I mean? To know that we're doing something to the world, like we're, we're providing something that is able to return back in some form of way. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know, having someone tell you um, that you're doing good and then, you know, them telling you that, oh, this made me happy and that makes you happy. Um, because that's kind of essentially what, you know, relieves us from, depression you know from us being sad so that we feel like we're enough because there's studies that show like there was a rat study right where they had one rat in a cage and they had one water and then the other water had cocaine in it and with that rat mm -hmm. you know that rat ended up drinking the water with the cocaine in it and of course it died um and then they had another cage that had one rat with a whole bunch of other rats and then the same supplement of water and cocaine and with 
all the things that were there, like they had the wheel and all these things, they were running on it, they were working together, they were putting things together, but none of them touched the, the water with the cocaine in it. They touched the regular water with regular water. So it's just to say us as people, and especially as men, we need people. We need each other. And the same thing going back to, you know, men versus women, that's not even a thing. That's a stigma to think that we need to go against each other and we need to be better than one another. But there's a lot of things that women are a lot more better at than men. And there's things that we're good at more than women. And that's okay. Why do we feel like we need to be exactly the same? We're the same as, as people, but we're different by the way that we play roles. You know what I mean? Women are more nurturers. We're more providers. We're more protectors. You know, we're more to lead. Women are more to heal us, to nurture us, to tell us everything's going to be okay and just hug us and give us love and give us that kind of energy to know that everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? Um, and us men are probably not good at that. How many times do you see guys that are struggling to change a diaper? And as funny as that is, it's just, it's just a thing. It's just not in our natural instincts to take care of something. We take care by protecting for whatever's coming our way, not for what is there. You know what I mean? If something's coming against us, we'd be like, nope, not, not in my house. And for a woman, it's like, oh, I'm already taking care. I got this over here. And then while they're doing that part, I make sure I'm that boundary to push off. I'm like, nope, making sure that she's doing what she got to do and I'm protecting her. You know, I'm protecting my baby, the people that I love and care about. You know what I mean? So it's, it's crazy how... This whole vulnerability thing has been a thing that has been taken away from us, literally. And it makes us not feel man enough. We're not doing mm. enough. You know, so. And I think that, like, along with Angel saying that, like, I really did appreciate when Jesse was bringing up, like, go find something to do. And um, along with being able to have that alone time, I think uh, hobbies are, are a lost art now. Um, I think it could become pretty monotonous with just working and then let's say people that do go out to the club every weekend because that's their sense of like, I'm off from work, I just got paid, let me do this because I'm not going to be able to do anything during the week. However, imagine being able to find something that you love to do, like let's say you love playing basketball or you love playing um, football or love doing taekwondo. Having those hobbies can actually be fulfilling because you can find clarity in any activity, I think, when we're not doing anything. And so, and as Jesse mentioned, if you're not comfortable with yourself and being vulnerable, then it's because like you, you haven't had the time to face that enough. And I could say growing up, that's why I had therapy, because I couldn't be vulnerable with anybody that I was around. So I felt like I was always alone doing it by myself. And it, And being in those times, whether it's young or even older now, it's still pretty challenging because you find out truths that you got to tell yourself. And then it's like, how do you how do you rationalize those truths? How do you reason with yourself to accept that in order to trust yourself? Like, hey, I noticed this and I know that it's true. What can I do about it? And I think um, spending time with those people, like we get caught up in um, being aware we're so familiar with. And then getting lost in that familiarity because all those people that we're around, they're not, they don't even allow us to be vulnerable because it's always maybe a quick response, maybe just to shut us down. And that's why we become more quiet. So I think new surroundings and new hobbies and committing to those hobbies, something that we should all do. Um, I think it, it's just always uh, finding that day, if that's going to be that day where you finally do it, get up and do it. Yeah, and I love how we're being vulnerable right now you know what I mean mm -hmm. we're being honest right about you know these are things that every guy goes through everybody goes through right there's times where we do feel alone and we don't gotta do it alone right just ask for help and doing things like you guys were saying like find that hobby you know for myself as times as I've been alone is where I just try to keep myself occupied not to ignore it because eventually I have to face it and I want to face it because I got to be honest with myself to trust myself as Tyler's mentioned before and if I can be honest and trust myself that means I can be honest and trust someone else so mm -hmm. I just think that when I had these times to be alone I would do taekwondo that's what I do and our I'll socialize with friends and and the event that we went to uh yesterday that you hosted Jesse it was a great event you know this this is something that I've never done before two years ago that's a different me and it's just about just saying why not you know why not do it yeah. what, what am I gonna lose I have nothing to lose if anything I have nothing now so if I go there and meet um people there then I'm gaining something and if I leave with no friends right then 
I didn't lose anything. I came there with nothing. I left with nothing. So there's nothing to lose there, right? So when you tell yourself the why not, it embraces you to try new things, to be honest with, you know, being vulnerable of doing these activities that, oh, I don't, I wouldn't say I play basketball, okay? But maybe it's a way to socialize. Right. You know what I mean? It's just to try, make the effort. And when you see that you're trying, you feel good about yourself. You're like, at least I'm trying. At Ooh. least I know that there is some hope, that there's something out for me there. You know what I mean? I don't want to keep hurting. I'm done with that. And I just want to be around people that appreciate me. And if they don't appreciate me, that's okay. Because I appreciate me. You know what I mean? When you talk to yourself this way, is where like you be more open to the people that will be open with you. Because it starts somewhere before it can ever come from somewhere else, you know? That's true. The key word, just try, just try. That's something new. Mm-hmm. You know? um, I would say, let's see, I'm thinking about how did you think about setting the events that you do now? Like, what? What made you want to start having a focus group, essentially? Well, I mean, it, it's all, I'll start from the beginning. This all started in 2020, literally, Ooh. like, literally, literally. I had, there was nothing behind it. Like, I was just laying down in the bed one day. I don't know what made me even think of this. It was like 3 in the morning. You know, the girls were at the time was doing homework. And I just woke up and just put on Facebook, like, I want to start a men's mental health group. And she was like, she looked at me like, what? You were just asleep. What do you think about? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just want to do something like that, you know? And at the time, I, is there's nothing I can remember. Like, I don't know if I was going through anything at that time. I think I just wanted to do something different, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, it just, um, it's just a lot of men going through a lot of different things right now. Like, a lot of men are experiencing new things like, you know, uh, marriages, kids. Maybe somebody's a manager at a job. They've never been a manager before. They're just experiencing new things, new devils. When you le- when you levitate, you know, you new devils come. You know, new challenges, and they just don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to take it. You know, they don't know how to be vulnerable. And so I just wanted to create something like that. Like you know, just let's all come together and help one another, man. Like you know, like just think differently. You know, and that's pretty much how it started. You know, and it's been successful. It's going to get even bigger, you know, yep. and I got faith it will. But that's pretty much where it stemmed from. Like, you know, I just I just wanted to create a safe space for men like that don't there's no in Springfield. There's no platform where men can go and, you know, be vulnerable and speak about what's going on in their life without being judged or saying, oh, you're crying or you're complaining, mm-hmm. you know, and I just wanted to create that space. And um, and then it, I, you know, I started taking it even more serious. You know, once I came home from the mental health facility, I checked myself into. And once I, when I went there, you know, it was like college, you know, a lot of different races, different ages. Everybody's going through something, you know, depression, anxiety, some suicide, some, you know, um, substance abuse, you know. And once I, once I, once I got that experience, I wanted to take it even more serious because it was some people there who couldn't go to their family anymore because of the bridges that they burnt maybe because of substance abuse or depression they didn't know how to handle depression so they cussed out their parents or whatever or did something in front of their little brother and their parents don't want them around no more and i'm like dang you know people really don't have nowhere to go like they're up here going to a mental facility for 30 days that's the only thing they have you know mm. and then i just started to think about how little how small springfield was and i'm like we don't have no programs out here like if you want to go to a mental health facility or something like that you got to go to connecticut or boston or you know way far out and that's when I just started taking more and more serious once I once once I got home, you know. And <clears throat> I just said, yeah, this 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 right here, I have to I have to like I have to figure out some way to make this work cuz we really need it. You know, yeah. and then you know, you got to focus on the youth too. Yep. That's where it comes from. That's our next generation. That's our next generation. So if we don't get them, we don't reach them early and teach them to speak right away and gonna be we're gonna be doing the same thing again yeah it's just gonna be a cycle and we don't want that so yeah yeah we we already had all the the arrows and (laughs) knives that has backstabbed us or just 
we face head on and we don't want to have that to continue any longer. And it's not to say that people ain't going to go through pain, right? Because when you take a risk for love, there's always a chance for pain. You can never just have love and that's it, not get to hurt. I think that's also the fallacy that people have. Like, oh, if I'm doing this X, Y, and Z, I'm going to be fine as long as I'm effective with communication, all this. Just because you're vulnerable, you're an effective communicator, and all those other good things, it doesn't mean you won't get hurt. You're still going to take a chance at that. Because even if it's not the person that don't understand that, it's just the fact that there's feelings. You know what I mean? There's That's a thing that it motivates us to, you know, say certain things we might not want to say or we close off for a little bit and we just need that space. Like, everybody's different, like you mentioned. So it's, it's never to judge someone for how they articulate themselves, the way they carry themselves, because everybody has to process it differently. Some people are able to talk about it real quick. Some people need space. If it's a day, maybe two days, who knows? But it's about being patient, tolerant, and understanding that's that's what brings love and that's all ties in of being vulnerable so yeah man i, I love yeah. that you're doing that I, I and you know just let them let men know like hey man you ain't the only one going through this you know and it's crazy how once 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 one person speaks you know the, the men start to get more comfortable and they start to speak too and that just yeah. shows you like hey like hey man we're going through the same thing bro from the same streets, went to the same schools, you deal with the same devils, man. So don't be afraid to speak, man. Some because what you're going through right now, somebody else might have went through and got through, and it can help you get through it with their advice or whatever the case may be. So yep, speak, bro. And that's 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 pretty much what men empower men is about. That's what you know my events are about. Just letting everybody know, and not just men. Like if female, if I have females attend too. Like hey, yep. You know, just let it out. If you don't have nobody else to go to, you can come to me. You can come here. We're going to help you. you I like how this all comes full circle because I remember even growing up, like, especially it would be difficult to, like, get a therapist because you have to go through this waiting list. And not not, um, all clinics are walk-ins either. So it's also the availability of uh, when they are available and how how uh how you bond with your therapist because it's not always going to be off that first time that you click right away with that therapist and so even with personality differences um it's being able to find that person you could really connect with and sometimes we could be speaking to each other <clears throat> and we're not having the same conversation because somehow some way we're not understanding it so it gets a bit confusing when you know, somebody that does want to help, it's just that their words can't get to them. They're not able to understand the words that they're giving them. So that's why it's really important being able to find somebody that you can understand and talk to and that they can relate to. And then that's where love languages come in because now we're speaking the same language. And if we could really understand, as Angel mentioned, uh, for men, we appreciate, we love words of affirmation. So even if that's your love language, then somebody uh, ha- understand that their words are going to have really strong power. So let me not rush into this conversation without preparing myself before I know what I want to say. And if somebody, let's say, enjoys quality time, they have to understand that with that quality time, you know, they're going to be prideful on that. So if anything was to happen, they may be a little bit more emotionally bothered because now we're ruining the good time we're supposed to be having. So I think understanding each other's love languages and um, being able to understand who's who and who are you in this conversation, I, that's something that we have to be completely mindful for. So Jesse being able to bring up how that dream basically came about because it came from his sleep, just woke up and said, I'm going to do it. And now look at how that language was respected, acknowledged, and he's around people that supported his dream. And now his dream has come to life. Mm, yeah. And that also starts where we're going to get into the four questions we have for you. They're called the rally for cry. So you can answer them to a minimum to one word to a ma- uh, a sentence maximum. And if it goes a little bit over, that's okay. So my first question is, what is the best advice you receive? Honestly, it's something as simple as just talk. Just talk. Mm. Yeah, because like I said, like I said, I, I I grew up not talking at all. Like my 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 whole attitude through everything I ever went through. This is life. Nobody said it was gonna be perfect or easy, and that was it. I gave myself that talk after everything I ever been through—a breakup, maybe failed a test, 
whatever, like anything I've ever been through, that was my that was my 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 pep talk. Hey, mm-hmm. nobody said this shit was gonna be perfect, bro. Keep pushing. Mm. And that goes with our second question: What is the worst advice you received? I don't know. That's gonna take a long time to, cause I'm I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I always surrounded myself with really, 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 really good people, man. And I always had the same circle for a while. Like the same friends I got now is the same friends I had in 2008. Mm-hmm. And I really can't remember any bad advice I got from them or a family member. To be totally honest with you, I mean, I'm trying to think. Like if I did get some bad advice, it's probably from somebody that I didn't listen to. Mm. So uh, mm. kind of hard to answer. If anything, like, especially with with that experience and, like, because there's all different kinds of advice and how that experience goes will determine it, whether it's good or bad. I think more of the bad advice would basically be telling yourself to stay quiet about it, if anything, you know? Like, you could look at that as advice, like, let me not speak about it, or I I don't see this having a resolution, so you don't even bother trying to find a solution. I love that you don't really can't remember it, so that's that's good, you know? I'm being so serious, like, I... Yeah, like, you know, like, I've always, my, everybody in my circle has always been supportive, always been, always been good people. Right. And like I said, if I did receive some bad advice from somebody, I probably didn't even Acknowledge take it. it. Yeah, take it in right. and thought okay. about it. Like, hey, so. Yeah, that's fair. I love that anyway. I, like Only I said, positive, probably, baby. Only positive. Yeah, there we like, go. Yeah, exactly. No, but that's that's the truth. Like, everything I have ever received some, for somebody, positive thing. Yeah. You know, so. That's I'll good. have to get back to you on that. Talk All right, man. That's okay. <laughs> but, yo, I thought about it, and I think I thought about this. This yeah. is this what it is. All right, man. That's fair. Uh, third question is, when you get good news, who is the first person you go to? I get good news. I go to? Probably my parents. Yeah, my mommy and my dad. Yeah. Because, like, they've always been supportive people. No. That's a great foundation too. Always. They've always been supportive. So, yeah, definitely them. Shout outs to them. Yeah. Yes. Shout out definitely mom and them. dad. Yep. Yeah. Both for them. Uh and then to our last question, hypothetically speaking, if people were at your funeral, what is one thing you hope they say about you? I just hope they remember me for, you know, me putting on, you know, for the men's mental health thing. Just remember me from that. I hope they would talk about. Honestly, like I think about this a lot. That's weird. Is it? Is it? Is it weird that you think no. about what you? No, it's not. I, I, I can, I can only imagine people saying good things about me. Honestly, yes. Like I, I, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I've always been a good person my whole life. Like I've always been a good kid. I've always been a trustworthy person, reliable person. So I know for a fact that everybody's gonna have something good to say about me. Especially, you know? especially if you had the same group and they're being yeah. supportive. Yeah. I'm talking about from the way I dress, how I dress, um, just how funny I was, how 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 militant I was, like, you know, yeah. So I love that. Yep. That's but great. I think, but I think the biggest thing I would want somebody to acknowledge, like, hey, this dude really put on for men's mental health. Like he really tried. Like he really, you know, that was one thing he really, 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 you know, focused on a lot. Was meant, you know, creating a safe space for men. Right. You know, so yes. Yeah. All right, yeah. Everybody, Jesse Williams. Sure. Jesse. I, I I love how this conversation goes. And you guys, if there's anything that you want to be vulnerable about, leave down in the comments down below. If it's on YouTube, if it's on your favorite podcast platform, also follow us at the Rally Cries on Instagram. We have some clips on there, and there there might be a little sneak peeks in there. You just never know. So yeah, this was a great conversation. I, I love having conversations like this because you know it's so refreshing. Um, and I, we really hope that you guys got something from this for the ones that are listening. Um, I want to, I want to come back though. Y'all gotta have yeah, me. I want to, I want to be oh, like a regular yeah, or something. You, you know, have me like once a month or something. Am, am I just? Have we to, got a lot of stuff to talk about. Man. Yeah, and you know, we're gonna have to update them with what's going on with you know with the group that you got because it's it's growing, it's growing. So hey, if you guys are from Springfield, just let me know. We we got things coming up. Yeah, we, we got things. I'm looking so. forward to the sequel already. Let's do it. Yes. Uh, listen, yesterday when at the event, I introduced him as like my partner. Like I said, you're yeah. doing a lot of work with this guy. Yeah, so. I appreciate that too. Yeah, I was I like, mean, hey, yeah. so touched. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> nah, definitely. Nah, we we got some things in the works. So. Yes, yes. But yeah, I definitely want to come back. Like I said, I want to talk about a lot of different things. You know, like yeah. everything. I don't. You know, 
I know you guys' podcast is like focused on like you know positive and like men stuff, but about all the things that is important about mental health. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? this is definitely one of them. Yeah, so so yeah, yeah I want to I want to come back and talk about a lot of or, more things. You know, have a long conversation and stuff like that. So yeah, that'd be great. I love that. I already love this conversation and times we hanged out already. Yeah, I would say yeah, why yeah. not. So yeah, guys. Until next time, make sure you take one step at a time and one day at a time. All right, peace. All right, all right.